What's up, everybody? Welcome to our Women in Worship podcast. Today, we're doing something really fun. And as everyone else is doing it on the planet, we are on Zoom together. <laughs> so whether you're watching this on our YouTube channel or you're listening to our podcast, we are all here together looking at each other. Oh, can't be in the same room because we know Rona is still here, guys. So, but it's so good to see your faces. So today we have um, the Women in Worship lead team. That's who's going to be on this call. We have Bethany, we have Carly, and we have Ashley, and we also have a special guest, Nix. Nix, thanks for yeah. joining us today. For all the way from Florida, worship pastor at Oceans Church, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm from here. where? From where? What? So I'm Southwest Florida area. So Naples, Florida, Estero, Fort Myers. That's yeah. kind of where our church is. Almost mm. said a stopo. So yeah. I'm glad <laughs> so uh, guys, as you see, this is probably the way that this call is going to go. So uh, love it. no, but thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking your time out with us. Yeah, I'm excited. And uh, yeah, our, our lead team, I, I love you gals too. It's so fun to be on here with you, but Today, we really just wanted to uh, sit down and have a conversation. That's what Women in Worship is about, community and conversation, about what God is doing. It is such a crazy time. We all know that. We all know that, like, for instance, our church is back online, offline, live services. Everybody's doing all kinds of different things. It's kind of like trying to um, hit a moving target right now. But yeah. in the midst of all of that, it's really been fun to have the conversations to see what God is doing in each person individually. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're having those conversations, they tend to really intersect at places to where we really can see and affirm in one another what God is doing. So that's kind of what the conversation is going to be like today. And Let's get started. So I know, I know Bethy and I have talked about this offline and, and in our, uh, our last CNC group, by the way, there will be CNC groups starting in September guys. So you'll want to hop on, um, hop in one of those. Uh, but <clears throat> I mean, talking about, I think people have heard the theme that, that shaking, that God is doing some shaking, but personally, you know, not just from a 30,000 foot view, but I just wanted to talk to you ladies and say, how has God been shaking? I feel like there's a lot of things that God is letting fall off of people that we have maybe either idolized at times that he's saying, no, that's not really what I had in mind or something like that. So Bethany, do you have any thoughts on that? Like get us started with, with what you're thinking and what God is maybe showing you. Yeah, yeah. You guys can totally hear my husband mowing grass outside. So <laughs> welcome to me and my life. Also, my phone just flashed twenty percent. We started at fifty like ten minutes ago. So God is faithful, and He loves me very much uh, today. Um, no, it's let me tell you that has been indicative of my week, um, which has felt like the last several months. Uh, as far as what God's been teaching me through this. Um, I have been sharing a lot in the last kind of 24, 48 hours, which is really close friends that for us as a family, our last several months feels like triage, uh, where we're just coming in and trying to love on people and um, meet them where they are as things have been happening all over the world and um, trying to help navigate. And truthfully, in the midst of that, it's for me personally become really heavy. So I'm not sure maybe if you're a leader or a pastor or a mom or uh, whatever that looks like for you, but a lot of times when we become the dump for everyone else, uh, if we're not careful, uh, we feel like a dump. Anyone? Can I get a good amen? Amen. Um, take that however you want to, whichever dump you want to uh, imply that as, it's just how it feels. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what God's really been teaching me last night, um, my small group uh, this summer outside of my CNC group, I have another group that, uh, we'll share about later on in other podcasts. But, uh, last night we were covering second Corinthians five, where it talks about how we are Christ's ambassadors and being an ambassador is just, um, uh, making the appeal for God to men. And that's what Paul calls us to. And so 
I think what's been interesting in this season and even the revelation for me, even just last night, has been seeing that um, I already knew that my position on a platform is not uh, all is not the definition of walking out my calling. Good. <laughs> you know, like we're we're all called. Um, it's just how that all um, is exercised in different seasons is relative to us and what we're willing to do and where we're willing to be obedient. Um, but in the midst of this season, um, it's become more about the fact that it's it's true to God's word where we're just making an appeal for God to men, for them to come back to God because of Christ and because of who Christ is, what he's done in us. Um, and what we know he can do in other people's lives, uh, which I have learned by experience that that's really hard. Uh oh, everybody hang in there. She'll be back. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> I know. The uh, internet guys, how many Zoom calls have frozen? I'll see you raising your hands in your cars right now. <laughs> yeah, so many times. So many times. Hey, while we're waiting for her to hop back on um, and finish what she's saying, I mean, Nix, during this season, you have actually had COVID. <laughs> so you've actually been in the quarantine and the isolation yourself. And, you know, maybe what are some things that, that God showed you during that time? Um, Obedience is everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think for me, you know, I you know, ever since COVID hit. So like in May, around April, May, I started to feel a shift. Um, and I started to feel transition. I said, Lord, what does this mean? You know, it could mean a lot of things. Um, but never did I think that my whole family would be quarantined in a house for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and, and in that moment, I will say I, in the two weeks that I was alone and there were so many things happening at my own church, so many, a lot of, I mean, churches right now, are trying to get it right. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we're trying to change so many things and trying to put systems in place that we think this is going to be sustainable. And, you know, a lot of it is, it, it's just what's happening with churches right now. And so in that, you know, during quarantine, a lot of shift was happening in my own church, um, which, and then led me to question my calling. It led me to question, okay, Lord, like what Bethany said earlier of like, we're realizing in this season that our, like our calling is not our title. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just who we are and so for me I'm like all right Lord <laughs> this was added on to my job what does this mean what are you trying to do um, and so in the two weeks that I was quarantined it was a lot of I've never felt more vulnerable um, in being transparent with with you guys and people that are listening I've never felt more insecure mm -hmm. um, just about what I'm called to do just because I've been so in this stride of doing worship stride of leading people in the presence of God and during worship and and now the Lord's saying, hey, maybe this is what I'm trying to do. And you need to be obedient to what I'm asking you to do. More so than what your leaders are asking, you need to be obedient to what I'm calling you to do at the end oh, of the day. Good. And so for me, the last two weeks, I have been highs and lows. I literally had a horrible day Monday <laughs> because, you know, we're human and we have the right to feel, but we don't, we can't stay there. Mm -hmm. We have to let the Lord really, really guide us in those situations. And so for me, it's been a lot of obedience and saying, I choose today, I choose to trust, I choose joy, I choose peace because I know that that is given to me. I choose freedom because I know I walk in freedom. Um, and so it's a constant die to self every single day, constant die to self. And that's basically, and I'm still learning it. Uh, I'll, I don't think we will ever graduate from that. I don't think we'll ever graduate from <laughs> like saying, oh, I, I can trust the Lord at all times. It's like, no, there's always something that we have to trust him. in, even if we don't see it right in front of us there, but it's something that we're going to have to continually practice and, and declare saying, Lord, I trust you. And I don't see the yeah. bird of you right now, but I just need to choose to trust you. And that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, and so those are my several thoughts that I had during quarantine. And I'm still luckily and guys I'm so happy that we have this platform of community because if it wasn't for community I probably would be in the dumps right now and and questioning everything the enemy would be probably firing shots at me which he has but because I have friends who see more in me than I do sometimes it's allowed me to be like wow okay god I see I see the horizon because I you've put people in my life who can say stop right there yeah that's not what that's not what the Lord says about you. You need to get out of the funk. This yeah. is what you're supposed to do. 
Um, and so it's because of community that this season has been has been doable because of the people yeah. in my life. So it's really good. I feel like God's really bringing us back to that to relationship and and really what it and really what it means. And yeah. I, I wonder sometimes because of that. I don't know if anybody wants to speak into this or have we done ministry wrong or maybe not done it exactly the way, you know, God intended it for the season. So welcome mm. back, Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I told you that's just about right. <laughs> um, I'll speak into that. Uh, I, I feel like, man, God's just been teaching me a lot about rest in this season. And I really think not, not only rest in my own personal journey, but rest as a church mm -hmm. uh, and what that looks like as ministry. Um, I felt like in the beginning of this, this whole, you know, Rona thing happening um, in March, God gave me a scripture and it was, it was Psalm 1819. And it says he brought me out into a spacious place. Yeah. Uh, he rescued me because he delighted in me. And so Bethany actually was the one who encouraged me to write lists during this season. Thank you very much. So I wrote out a list. Okay, what does a spacious place actually look like, if, especially in this season? Um, and, and some of the things that I wrote down were um, I, you can see clearly, you have vision, you can look far ahead. Um, it's not crowded and there's room to spread out. You can see others around you. I know we're just talking about community, but you can actually see the people that are in this with you together. And there's inspiration in that space. And I feel like, man, when this, this all went down, I'm, I'm a, a pastor at a church that just launched three years ago. And so it's a smaller church where we weren't doing video. Um, we weren't doing any type of streaming when this all happened. So it was a huge learning curve. Um, and then I am also a mom of two littles. I have a one-year-old and a four-year-old. <laughs> so talk about chaos and full-time life guys. Oh my goodness. I, I just was like, Lord, how do I handle this? How do I, how do I find rest in this season of trying to, you know, get my four-year-old through preschool? He's driving me insane. I'm trying to, to lead a church and um, trying to learn what, you know, doing video streaming, um, what does that look like for our small church? And we also meet in a school, so we don't have a venue, even if we did want to, to start meeting again. We're also in California, which, as you all know, is really, really cray cray right now. Um, so there was just a lot of chaos. And I felt God saying, hey, you need to come. I have this spacious place for you. Good. Walk into it. Um, mm -hmm. Get to the place where you can see clearly again. Get to the place where you can hear my voice louder than yeah. you did before. And so, my prayer, um, and and really, honestly, that that verse has has been with me this whole season. And my prayer has been, God, help me not to, um, because things are, you know, we're talking about ministry and how is it going to look different? Because we can't go back to the way it was. Yeah. There's going to be a new normal. And, and I think, I think God is working in that. And so how do we move forward in a spacious place yeah. and not go back to the busyness and all of the, the things and the ministries that we were doing before, how do we create a space, not only for us as leaders, but for our congregations yeah. and the people that we're shepherding yeah. How do we set a precedent of, hey, we don't have to, to do it the way we did before. And how can we help create spacious places for, for others as well Yeah. in this season? Um, yeah, that has, I, I don't have an answer yet, <laughs> but, but we're figuring it out. We're walking, yeah. walking through it. That's really good because in the beginning of quarantine, I was reading through, you know, Psalm 23 the good shepherd. And mm -hmm. I really felt like the Lord was taking us into a place of shepherding us, like pulling us away. And I know a lot of people have still been busy, you know, but, but a pulling away of, of shepherding us. Cause I think sometimes even 
in leadership, I've gotten shepherding so wrong that it's almost like it's been, he's been really kind to teach Mm -hmm. again, Mm -hmm. how to shepherd through, through this time. So, I mean, that's one of the things that, that he's really been speaking to me and Mm -hmm. showing me how to do that. So, yeah. Can I, can I jump in right here too? Um, so, and this, this really resonates with me and Ashley, we had talked a little bit about this too, but I think for me in this season, it's been, um, in order to be a good shepherd, I've got to hear his voice, like, Mm -hmm. and, and I've got to be able to lead from that place. And I Mm -hmm. think it's so easy to get caught up, especially right now with all the changes, wanting to, to catch the vision of what everyone else is doing and having access, uh, so much access right now to what everybody's doing, how they're doing it and how something looks. And. I think it's, it's been a battle of comparison in a lot of ways, wow. um, just in my, in my own brain space. And I tend to get negative real quick, um, especially with my thoughts towards myself and my leadership and, oh man, like I must be failing at something because this doesn't look a certain way or carrying the weight of those things. And so a lot of things God's been teaching me and reinforcing me in this season is the pressure mm-hmm. is not on me to make anything happen. Yeah. Like he, yeah. he never asked, he never asked me to carry the weight to change okay. people. He never asked me to carry the weight to save people. That's not my job. My job is to be obedient and to be in tune and in step with him and him, what he's doing and his voice and his presence, because he's trusted me with a, with a group of people Mm -hmm. that I'm leading Mm -hmm. and they're, they're following me wherever, wherever I'm going, whatever, whatever weirdness I'm in, they're feeling it, whatever tension I'm in, they're feeling it. And so um, I've really just had to remember to like I've got to tune everything else out, all the things that are vying for my attention right now. Mm-hmm. And I need to catch the vision for what God's given me for this house in Charleston, South Carolina, and these people that he's given uh, and trusted us with to lead and to shepherd. And so for me, that's been a huge thing is just like uprooting that comparison thing. I've had to, I've had to literally like stop watching all the things, <laughs> all the people, all the things, everything that they're doing till I could get to a healthy place where I could just maybe learn because I think we can learn from each other and what each other um, is doing, but it's different when you start trying to become those things. Right. And, yes. and, uh, and I, and I've got to be, I've got to, I know me and I know myself and staying in tune with that vision specifically um, for here. So. Kind of shows us the condition we were in right as we came out of quarantine that mm-hmm. we had to keep struggling and fight to figure out how to do it and and what's yeah. next and yeah I, I keep I call it the rat race of ministry and the rat race of life and what's the next thing like how do we fix this so yeah mm, I, I think that we're I think we're getting healthier honestly mm. yeah yeah well I think in revealing the condition of our heart it'll probably get worse before it gets better <laughs> you know like yeah. because we're actually having to acknowledge Mm -hmm. uh, the busyness. I know I've shared before, um, that my, my pace was so, um, was so familiar that I never realized how dangerous it was Mm -hmm. until it wasn't there for me anymore. And until I had a friend, uh, bring her boys out. We have chickens in our yard. Welcome to me. And uh, we're like a little mini, who knows what we are, <laughs> but uh, she, it's COVID, you know, so she brought her four young boys out to see uh, the chickens and just come out in the country and roll in the mud a little while. And uh, she's getting in the car and we were talking and I was like, you know, this was so great. It was so great to catch up with you. And she just looked at me point blank and we're friends and we have a relationship. She just said, did you not realize how much you were doing? And I was like, oh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, when that friend you know? is truthful, you're like. <laughs> I know. I love her so Faithful much. Faithful are the I wounds. Just, <laughs> the only way that I could respond was I looked at her and said, friend, to not name her name, but she knows I love her very much. Uh, I have done that my entire ministry. So I never recognized it until I didn't have it there. Mm. It seemed odd to not be at that pace. But now we're at a pace of people, which means we grow and ebb and flow with where people are spiritually Mm -hmm. and emotionally and physically. And if you're task driven for my task driven friends, uh, that can seem like a non day's work. 
mm-hmm. um, because there's nothing to, to show. Um, but when in fact in the kingdom, it's an incredible day's work because mm-hmm. being kingdom minded is about having that relationship with people and being okay uh, with you didn't have your task done, but you definitely um, walked people through where they are in their moment. Mm-hmm. I think that's one thing that I've learned too, just in the season of like, you know, I, our church, when, when we hit COVID pre COVID, like we started calling people on our list and we literally all took a section and we're like, we're going to call this campus people from this campus, go ahead. And I've never, like, I literally one day I had a, all the calls that I had were amazing calls and I got to meet people where they were, where they were spiritually. And I've mm-hmm. never felt so stretched pastorally. And I'm a young pastor, you know, I've been at this, I've grown up in the church my whole life, but I've been vocationally two years now. And as a 24 year old, I'm like, wow, this is, this is what it is. You know, it's taking the time to call someone and, and, you know, I'm pastoring people that are two seasons ahead of me, meaning they're married and have kids and, and they're telling me their problems. And I'm like, Lord, you've entrusted me with these people. And, but this is what the true kingdom looks like. It's meeting people where they're at. And it's also being consistent in meeting those people consistently. And I think I had a, Bethany and I had a conversation months ago, which like blessed my heart. And one of the things that she me in was like, we have to be consistent because people follow consistent people. Mm-hmm. And as pastors, we have to be consistent as worship leaders, as high level volunteers that people that are listening right now, if you're a high level volunteer, the best thing you can be is consistent for the people that are looking at you because that's Mm -hmm. the people that are, that you're leading. And so for me, I've learned in this season, like pastoring and, 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 and being community driven is meeting people where they're at and not striving for something, but saying, Hey, it sucks. Hey, it sucks too. Let's pray together. And and let's let the Lord fill in the gaps. Let's let the Lord meet us because we're taking the time to acknowledge where we're at. So the Lord can transform us Mm -hmm. (laughs) because when there's transition, there's transformation. Um, yeah. we're meeting with people. That's, that's what's, what's happening is the Lord is we're allowing the Lord to transform us because we're taking the time to acknowledge our, our current season and our current emotions, where we're at. It's and really so that's good, been really good for me mm-hmm. this season. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Well, she just preached a whole sermon. <laughs> no, I'm pre- taking notes. Wait, what did, you say? what did you say? What'd you say? Well, there's transition, there's transformation. Oh, Write it down. <laughs> I, I honestly, got, I, read, I, I, I was about watching. to let my, my uh, old roots come out where I say, I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't make me <laughs> laugh in my oh, house. You won't. Uh, you like, won't. <laughs> Stephen Furtick <laughs> in this message. And, and it's, it's so cool because it's like, you know, you think of a pregnant lady in like nine months and, and that's why birthing is so painful. Mm-hmm. because there's transformation that's going to happen out of that season and so like and I'm preaching to myself because I have days where I'm like I, what, Lord what the heck are you doing and yeah. it, it's yeah. painful but I know that on the other side there's going to be so much fruit out of this season that we're all in yeah. and it's and it's one thing too I thought about in Mark and all the gospels where the Lord talks about the different types of soils mm. and uses that and it's like what what look at your soil where is it are you do you have fertile soil because where there's fertile soil, that means fruits are going to grow and things are going to mm. sprout. But if you, if you have a, a soil where you know the promises of God, but you let the world shake you up and then you forget what the Lord said about you, mm-hmm. you need to reevaluate where your soil is. And so even in the season, like let's steward our soil. And if mm-hmm. you're a pastor, if you're just a Christian, a believer, like we have to really look at where we're at. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of fruit that's going to come out of the season. And if we're choosing to not steward the season right, we're going to see the repercussions of it. That's um, right. So, and so yeah. that's something that I'm like, Lord, how does my soil look? Mm-hmm. I want to make sure that a year from now, I look back at the season and I go, that was a good season. Amidst yeah. all the craziness, we stewarded that season right. As a church, we let our people right because we stewarded the mm-hmm. soil that our ground, that the ground was on. So. Yeah. I think it's good to think about the framework of that as good soul means good roots, mm-hmm. you know, and it's when you're looking back and you say, was this season fruitful? I think then that's where you might want to dig up and look at the root. What took root in that season that you're carrying with you into the next season? You know, what did you learn in that spot? If your soil was good, there'll be fruit in the next season. Mm-hmm. If your soil was, you know, it's like the parable, uh, parable of the soul, you know, like, uh, 
you sprouted the seeds, some grew when weeds, some grew, and then some grew fantastic. So it's just constantly remembering that um, even in isolation, even in quarantine, even whatever it looks like for all of us, that um, good soil is not going to always look like, just like Ashley said, what it's always been. Mm. Um, the new season and the new fruit is, uh, I feel like there's going to be just, I mean, just prophetically, it's going to be raw and authentic. Mm. Um, it's messy. Uh, the new fruit is going to be more like biting into a tomato than it is an apple. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And, uh, and I think that's okay because it's in that, that, that God's able to, to move because the minute that we feel like our strength is able to carry us is the minute that our roots become shallow. Mm, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. I was even reminded of the verse, um, our lead pastor, he's been reminding us of this, but it's Habakkuk where it talks about the glory of this present house will be greater yeah. than the glory of the former house. Mm-hmm. Yes. The Lord Almighty. And then it says, and in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like such a good word to hold on to in this season of like the glory of the glory of, of the present house will be greater than what yeah. happened. Yeah. And then I declare peace. Um, and so it's, it's just all ties in together with, with what the Lord is trying to tell all of us in this season. Absolutely. And you know, it's crazy that book, the Lord had me in that for quite a while. There's only two chapters, but in the flip of it, the people are coming back to rebuild the house Mm -hmm. because they were building their own homes and they were building their own places and they forgot about, about God's house. And so God called them to go get fresh timber Mm-hmm. And to go start with a new foundation. Mm-hmm. I, I really believe with all my heart, that's where we are um, in this season. It was, it's, we're rebuilding our foundation as we know it yeah. um, to yeah. bring forth whatever that new fruit looks like. So I feel like we're, I feel like he's bringing us in to really sense what his, what his heart is. You know, I've, I've, mm-hmm. one prayer I've been praying is in Proverbs 20, uh, verse 12, I think it is, it talks about, having ears to hear and eyes to see is a gift from the Lord. Mm-hmm. So just really been praying for that gift because I, we are called to live kingdom minded with eternity in sight. Mm-hmm. You know, out of second Corinthians, um, second Corinthians uh, four, and then you got Colossians three, where it talks about setting your eyes on things above. And I think that we have, I know me personally, I have set my things on temporal on things that are here now and that are gone tomorrow. And the Lord is saying, hey, I need you to, because as Christians, we are to rise up and see above the mess and see what's happening in the spiritual realm of the realm, not just the fleshly of what's acting out or what is the physical manifestation of things going on. He is wanting us because, you know, the, the Holy Spirit says that in the Bible, it says the Holy Spirit sees it says and sees and does what he hears the father say. Mm-hmm. If we're living a spirit filled life, we're living life by the spirit and not the flesh. Then we are to supposed to be in tune with what the spirit of God is saying. And mm-hmm. let's be honest, you know, let's just go ahead and bring it to the table. There's been a lot going on the past few months, just in society, social issues and things like that, that have needed to come to the surface. Yeah. But how do we how do we keep those things fight for those things but also see what God is doing in the middle of all of it. Yeah. So we've got to be called we got to be we've got to be called higher. Yeah. We can't be the we can't be the children of God that get into to they get into everything that you know we shouldn't be in yes we are to get in yes we are to speak up yes we are to fight for justice yes because justice and righteousness are the throne or the foundation of the throne of god mm-hmm. right it says that in psalm so yes we are to do that but if you pull back and you go what is you're asking yourself what is the father doing mm-hmm. what is he saying and when you bring that down to a personal level i'm sitting here going okay, God, I want to hear you tell me what my next step is, because if I'm living by the spirit, Mm. then I am following the voice of the Lord and the sheep know my voice. Right. Right. And 
I actually read a scripture on that yesterday in Isaiah. Um, it's Isaiah 30, 21, and it says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, mm. your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Walk in it. So good. Man, I underlined it so much because I, I mean, the right and the left, the right and the left, there's so much division even in the, I have been praying over the big C church mm-hmm. this, in this season because Satan is, is roaming around and <laughs> trying to cause so much division right now. And it hurts my heart. Yeah. It's like, man, how can we be a people that hear a voice behind us saying, this is the way walk in it. Uh, it's hard, but yeah, don't look to the left or the right. Look above. I'm sure we've heard that, you know, from our pastors and from, you know, all, all over social media, but how do we, how do we tangibly do that when it's all around us? Well, it's going back to the garden. Yeah. I mean, Jesus, I mean, God walking in the cool of the day, asking Adam and Eve where they were like, I mean, he went and visited with them. Right. And I think he's just bringing us back to the original state of where we've just left it. Mm -hmm. I personally, I confess and I've had to repent. I've had, I've had to repent during, um, during this time because I've, I've let things be God instead of God himself. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes. I think too, like one thing that, you know, going, I I love that you shared that verse. Oh my gosh, that was so good. That like, I just got chills hearing that, but it's, it's just like, in order for us to clearly hear the voice of God, what do we need to do? Just like, you know, Lee just said, like, we need to repent. We need to look inward. And I believe, like, I truly believe, you know, if you're listening and like, there's something in your life that's hindering you, you need to let that thing go. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm talking addiction. I'm talking idols. I'm talking everything because the Lord is saying, I'm calling you higher. Yeah. Pornography addiction. I'm calling you higher. Come on, yeah. drug yeah. addiction. I'm calling you higher yeah. than all of this. Your marriage needs to be, I'm, I'm calling y'all's marriage higher. I'm calling you higher as a leader. And for me, one of like, that's one thing that I had to let go of is a lot of things in my life that I looked and I went, wow, these are hindering me <laughs> from yeah. stepping into the anointing, from stepping into this next phase of my life. And so the Lord is, and I, and I think that's why the Lord is saying, look inward and, and start releasing things that were never yours to begin with. Start releasing lies that the enemy put on you that you should have never believed because that in that, that's where the fertile is going to grow. And then in that, that's where you're going to see a year from now what the Lord was doing. But we all have to let go and repent and, and of things that we thought was right. And, you know, and I know we're going to talk, you guys are going to have another episode on this, but race is a good example of that too. Um, right. Perceptions of, of racism and racial reconciliation. And, and I think, I think, it's, it's what Bethany said, we're getting so messy in this season, <laughs> but it's like, it's worth it at the end if it's handled right. Yeah. 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 I think what's fun is that, and y'all have to forgive me because anybody that's been around me knows I am obsessed with the Chosen series. If you haven't watched it, download it today. I've been watching it. So good. Pay it forward. Oh my gosh. It will change your life. So good. Um, but what I love about it is just the constant demonstration of how Jesus is never afraid of the messy. Mm-hmm. He's never afraid of the people that everyone was going to question him about. He was never afraid of those relationships. And there was one moment for me that was super pivotal, pivotal, which is not a word, <laughs> pivotal. Uh, my gosh, what is wrong with this day? Um, we'll get you a dictionary. But the, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but the, the a pivotal moment is when um, they're on their way uh to the next place, to Peter's hometown, and Jesus heals the leper on the way, and uh, he has to turn around, and the guys are like, is it now? Is it time? Meaning the disciples, and Jesus is like, they they constantly are going, how do we do this? How did you do that? Do we do that? How did you do that? And he turns around, he puts his hand on one of their shoulders, and he goes, if we have to explain every time something like this happens, this trip's going to get very annoying. (laughs) Obviously, Jesus didn't say that, (laughs) but uh, it's so true because every time Jesus is up to something or he's doing something in our lives, or even when he's Mm. calling us higher, Mm -hmm. our next, I don't know about y'all, I'll just say me, I won't even blanket statement. My next thing is, what are we doing? How are we getting there? How's it going? 
are we there? Did we do it? Did I, did I do good? You know, like, <laughs> did, did I get to that spot? Because we're just, we're being honest because the reality is, is if we aren't, um, if we are heavenly leaned into the faith component, uh, mm-hmm. that it requires, to walk in that space where we're okay with whatever God's okay with it looking like for now, um, then we're, we're missing out on just the goodness and the blessing that is the mess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When you're, when you're saying mess, I keep thinking about you talking about Habakkuk and going back to the, you know, the house. And I just feel like God is doing the, doing a demo job. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on us I really I really do I've seen I've seen the word barrier during this time like God's breaking down barriers so you know he can he can so if we're going to be vessels guys like we have to be in the spot to where we can be a vessel right 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 Hey, you'll have to forgive me. I misquoted that for you, Nick. You said Habakkuk, and I'm thinking Haggai. Haggai. I knew you were thinking Haggai. Yeah, I I just, I ran, and then I backtracked, and I'm not going to lie, I've been looking down at my phone in scripture, and I was like, yeah, I was was totally (laughs) wrong about that. It's one of those H books. You know, what does this say for me? (laughs) It's only fitting. I'm surprised it wasn't like over in Joshua. (laughs) Let's love Bethany. She'll take that hard, guys. It's okay. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I mean, if you get them mixed <laughs> up. I mean, was it Matthew, the one that Jesus loved? I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's okay. <laughs> I'll wear it. I misquote things all the time. Thank God for Google. Like, him, I mean, I just look at stuff with Google. I'm like, thank you for taking mm-hmm. me back and showing me yes. that. <laughs> and I was ignorant in that moment. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> I was in Bible college, so I'm like, I get these wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, yeah, he totally did that. And I was sitting there in my mind, the more I started talking about it, I was like, it was not in back. I don't think. I, I don't remember I've, that name. I've gotten like my my friends like, oh Nick, so I'm like, listen, <laughs> I'm like, I'm I'm good. Like, I don't really know. <laughs> Just tell your friend no. you're not a Bible scholar either, okay? So <laughs> There's a lot of words in this book. A lot of words. <laughs> a lot of words. And some of them are in, this, in the different books said a different way. Okay. Oh man. Just I love it. Back off. Well, let me ask this. Totally switching gears. Have any of you seen any incredible memes uh, in all of this that you feel like you need to share for just some uh, some good laughs today? Yes uh have you guys seen the one with the the slide and it says if 2020 was a slide and it's just <laughs> and it falls off yeah. and you eat it yeah it's, it's, it's yeah. so sad but so true there's, there's one we might saw what well, actually two that are that pop up right now but one of them is things have been weird since the movie cats came out <laughs> that laugh, <laughs> so true and then there was one, I don't know if you guys remember this like viral clip that went out in the beginning of the year where this girl, this guy was like, sing the next lyric. And this girl started singing and she was like phenomenal. And it was like a random girl. It's like, that was the last best thing that happened in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, that happened this year. And I was like, that's so crazy. <laughs> like this year has just been here. Oh my gosh. I love all the memes that have any type of chihuahua or bulging <laughs> eye dog. That is like sadad, and everything at the bottom is like, is that you, Rona? Like every time you hear a sneeze or yes. anything with an animal in it, I'm there. Oh, I'm those like animal memes with your name on it. Yes. yes. I have seen that. I'm so frustrated because my name is Nick and there's no like memes about it. And I'm like, I'm dying to see You just this. write, you oh just my gosh. write in. Yeah. I think you DM the guy. Oh, I'm going to do that then. Yes. My that the is, is the squirrely little thing. Oh my god! <laughs> I um I went down a deep dark hole with that on Instagram the other day, and there's like what name <laughs> is your is your '90s item? Like whatever item it is from the '90s. And Ashley was the you know the paper things that you fold and you go you know back. Yes, and I saw that. The killer. I was like, I used to do this all the time. <laughs> that is so Ashley. Your fortune teller, and if you could uh, go really fast with the fortune teller back and forth, you're pretty legit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I get it. The last one I saw was um, 
posted by what's the guy nathan from hillsong nathan i can't say his i can't say his last name but he's hilarious there's a girl starting to sing him and she's just belting at miss america some pageant like that and it says welcome to 2020 and she just when the music comes in she is crazy off pitch (laughs) and the whole different (laughs) yeah it's not matching and it's not pretty she's screaming that's not pretty that's exactly what it's like that's 2020 for you that's 2020 2020 i love it we're gonna be the quarantine crew <laughs> 40 years from now which whoa that makes me 80 <laughs> i'm gonna be like remember quarantine Bethany? and actually remember quarantine <laughs> what's funny has been people people have been embracing like christmas in july like yes. a lot. and then i have a friend she's like from miami and she was saying yeah people in miami are putting lights up they're just like ready and yes I'm, i've heard i've heard people so doing that Hey, if I wasn't about to sell my house, my, I'd put my Christmas tree up right now. <laughs> yes, you know you why? Because play. it makes me happy. Yep. Yeah. Maybe that's what I need to do for this week. <laughs> Bethany, <laughs> you need about 10 there trees is. for this week. Just put a Hallmark tree on. Everybody on this call, <laughs> everybody listening, it is going to be a while before you hear the bit. Y'all just go ahead and pray for Bethany. Just keep her in <laughs> prayers. When you when we actually post this, you just keep it in your prayers. I'm pretty sure, you know. Yeah. They're crazy days prayers. ahead for all of us. <laughs> I already I'm not full disclosure, we have a Christmas tree in our room. Just one of those like little squirrely trees, you know, that has thin branches that I thought was really cool, but I realized it was a lot of work to fluff, so I refused to put it up and squish it because it takes too long. So we may or may not have a Christmas tree in our room all year. <laughs> And uh, it may or may not blink most nights because I put (laughs) blinking lights on it because Andy's not into that. So our big tree doesn't have that. But the one in our room is. (laughs) (laughs) I I I, I may or may not have a fully decorated tree in my garage right now. Oh, I support that. Are you one of those that just wheel it in for Christmas? (laughs) Yes. Because, you know, it's. Yeah, it was, we won it one year and it was pre-decorated by like a professional decorator. It's real fancy. Okay. And I don't, I wouldn't be able to do that. So why, why try? Girl, you put those trash bags over it, don't you? To keep the, the dust off. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so what do you do with all your kids' ornaments when you bring, when they bring them home? Have you, are you there yet? Because no, you're about to be flooded. I'm starting to get there. And so I think we're going to have to have another tree in, in another room. That's just the kid tree, you know, because yes. I don't know. I have a few things on, on that beautiful tree, but I, I don't know how much I want to mess <laughs> with it. Basically, you just said, sorry, kids, your stuff <laughs> is not, is not good enough for this tree. You take that popsicle manger scene and you put it over there. Listen, growing up Hispanic, I always brought ornaments home to my mom and she was like, okay, no. (laughs) She had a witch. Girl, that ain't Hispanic. That is all kid in general. I have like four shoe boxes of crap. And every year, I think it's a good idea that we all as a family make ornaments. And my husband loves it. (laughs) <laughs> so by the time Isaiah and Andy are done, I am 20 new ornaments deep <laughs> and my daughter's a pack rat and we can throw nothing away. Oh my gosh. So now it's just become, we, everything's a tree, a windowsill, a door frame, <laughs> whatever the ornament, I hear you laughing, Carly, whatever the <laughs> ornament <laughs> can hang on. You know, Isaiah is taking those, it's like felt Jesus from Sunday school and sticking them <laughs> to the windows. Oh, she's all about it. She's all about it. She's like, you know, that that your manger's thing, it doesn't have any of the wise men on it. So how do we know? You know, <laughs> things like that. Your baby Jesus is not accurate. Oh, well. She's really not. But that seems like something she'd say, and I'm waiting for it. <laughs> she's a hoot. She's a hoot. Hey, guys, yeah. it's been a great conversation. Thanks, everybody, for for jumping in. Nix, thank you for being a part of this conversation. Yeah. And um, we love you, and you're just part of the part of the family now yeah <laughs> it's stuck with us hey guys don't forget to check us out um more podcasts are headed your way we're going to have a youtube channel this is going to be on be headed live going live soon so thank you so much for joining in we love each of you and y'all have a great day have a great day